We have a heated Piers Morgan panel featuring a leftist that I love listening to and Rana Kalik on with Gremlin Alan Dershowitz as well as Gideon Levy who I don't know if he's going to make it into this episode but they're speaking about Israel, Gaza and more importantly the most recent bombings in Lebanon and what I thought could make for some pretty insightful commentary and also kind of filling in the gaps of what people might even know is happening. So let's jump in and see what was said. Leon Panetta, the former CIA director, called an act of terrorism Israel blowing up cellular devices. And we should all be concerned with sure. that standard Israel set. Because by your logic, Alan, does that make it okay to blow up the cellular devices of Israeli soldiers who are off duty, far from any battlefield, going about their daily lives with their kids in grocery stores, yes. in that, hospitals? That, would be that is what that Israel would be did legal. to Lebanon last week. That would be that wow, would be legal. We know that, that, that would be called legal. a terrorist that would attack be legal if it happened. Under the law. And then, but it would and be then legal. let me just say, I am very upset right now. I am very upset right now because Israel has just murdered 300 of my fellow countrymen in Lebanon in an indiscriminate carpet bombing campaign based on lies. I have people calling me, telling me the horrors they're experiencing at this very moment under Israeli just stop bombardment. Just stop firing rockets. And it's, just this is stop as firing rockets and it will end. And these bombings that she's discussing here account for the deadliest day of bombings in the country since 2006 that day was also done by Israel as well, bombing a residential neighbor in Beirut, which doing so knowing it would disproportionately destroy civilian infrastructure and innocent civilians in a response that is disproportionate to the attack that they received is a war crime. I mean, it amounts to crimes against humanity as well as them hitting Eastern and Southern Lebanon as well, leaving a death toll of 274 in total. They target it by their own admission, medical centers, ambulances, even people trying to flee as well as civilian homes and which they claimed were housing Hezbollah weapons, striking eerily similar to the justifications that they give for the destruction on a genocidal level that they're doing in Gaza. And of course, this comes, as she also mentioned, only a few days after they exploded handheld devices like pagers, killing 32, injuring over 3,000, including children and hundreds of medical personnel, a few medical personnel killed, that is, and, a, and over hundreds injured, in what also constitutes a clear-cut war crime. They're just going back to back like Drake and Meek Mill. This is a, it's by failure to verify their targets and the also in the nature of them being impossible to know if civilians or civilian infrastructure would be out of harm's way and what would be indiscriminate attacks. They wouldn't know where these pagers are when they detonate them. It's also directly against humanitarian law to use booby traps, that being a device rigged to kill someone without them knowing pretty much. It's against humanitarian law to use those disguised as harmless objects that civilians could mistake. I mean, I could go on for days about the endless amounts of war crimes that have been carried out in just these attacks, let alone other ones that I haven't even mentioned, but there's more of the panel I would like to get to and cover. Just know that multiple UN experts, humanitarian law experts, all agree that these are clear-cut crimes of war, including the spread of terror as civilians in Lebanon are now scared to do as much as use electricity electronics, send text, emails, because who knows what else could be rigged. On October 8th, Hezbollah started firing at Israel in solidarity with Palestinians. And since then, we've heard from Hezbollah repeatedly say Illegally. they will stop firing when Israel stops it, uh, its aggression on Gaza. Israel has repeatedly refused to stop its aggression on Gaza and things have escalated in the north and all also say that, and this is according to the BBC, 80% of the cross-border attacks have actually gone from Israel to Lebanon. This is a two-way fight taking place. Okay, but let moment. me ask you, and okay, but actually, after what you just said, hang on, what you just said was interesting. I think there's an important comparison to be made here that can kind of shed light on the unconscious bias that American has towards Arab countries. When Russia attacks Ukraine and we send them bombs and weapons to use, it's us defending an ally, and that's rightfully so. I mean, I completely back doing that, don't get me mistaken here, but when Lebanon stands in solidarity with its ally Palestine, who is having genocide done to it, it's terrorism. Yet there's no material difference in these two situations I just described for you. And yes, by the way, Hezbollah is a terrorist group. I'm pretty consistent in that I think Hezbollah, Hamas, and the IDF are all acting as terrorist groups. But as Rania points out, 80% of these attacks 
across the Lebanon-Israel border comes from Israel into Lebanon. It's a disproportionate conflict, disproportionate responses from Israel, who is just looking for any excuse to flatten Arab territory. At what point do Arabs get the right to defend themselves? At what point does our security matter? Israel has spent the last almost 12 months carrying out a genocide in Gaza. They've killed over 41,000 people, and we all know that's a huge underestimate. Over 16,000 children. Who started that one? Just Who today, Israel has killed 300 100 Lebanese war? people, including 21 Who Lebanese children. War? At what point do we get to defend ourselves? And Alan, come on, Israel's stop, been massacring and occupying and terrorizing and you... its neighbors for the past 76 years. Israel needs to stop terrorizing its neighbors, stop being an apartheid settler if, colony, if you and maybe Israel its neighbors alone, won't fire at it because left its Israel neighbors alone. are defending themselves. Is... Let's talk about where Hezbollah comes from. Hezbollah emerged, it's Lebanese people, who emerged in the mid-1980s because Israel viciously invaded and occupied Lebanon. I mean, that invasion and occupation was so horrific. Ronald Reagan called up the no Israeli Prime reason. Minister Menachem no Begin at the time reason, right? and told him and told him to stop carrying out what Ronald Reagan referred to as a holocaust on Beirut. And this is a very important point that I'm glad she made as well because it kind of dismantles the myth of, well, Israel is doing this to eradicate Hamas. Their actions, which uh, not according to me, according to the ICJ, constitute an illegal occupation that constitutes apartheid in Gaza. Their constant invasion and bombing campaigns of their neighbors, leaving Lebanese cities in rubbles. I mean, even Ronald Reagan, one of the biggest war hawks, like a major war hawk, even called their 1980s attacks into Beirut a holocaust. I mean, keep that in mind. This is Ronald Reagan. Do we have to go into the atrocities that he's done abroad? I hope not. That would have to be a video in and of itself, which is pretty astounding to come out of his mouth. And it means that they were doing some pretty bad things. And it's from these atrocities that Hezbollah rose because terrorism breeds terrorism. I know that's a surprising concept to Zionists, but it's just the truth. If you impose terror on a nation, on a kind of people, then terror is going to be pretty much all that they know. And the question that Rania posed at the beginning rings very true here. When are Arabs allowed to defend themselves? At what point when Israel's been doing this to all of them since its inception, if not at least since the early 1960s, right? So like two decades after their inception, at what point can Arabs retaliate against these constant attacks, these constant constant atrocities, constant invasions, the apartheid, the occupations, the killing of civilians. When can they protect their own sovereignty and people without it being labeled as terrorism? And then on the other side of that same coin, when will Israel rightfully be labeled terrorism for doing plenty of acts of terror themselves? Israel is fighting for all Western democracies, not just for the defense of its okay, own people. Okay, let me bring in Ron, he's been waiting patiently. Um, what's your response to Alan Dershowitz? Well, you know, Alan Dershowitz has spent his entire career justifying Israel murdering Arab children. That's when he's not busy defending pedophiles and rapists like Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein. So I'm not okay, surprised so that he's come on this program today. Okay, so we're going to get into personal attacks now. To defend now. terrorist let's, attacks. Let's Let me finish, Alan. From this was quite the slam dunk, so I just had to throw it in there at the end. Not a lot of context to add to this part, but she is exactly correct. I mean, when you defend the people that Alan Dershowitz has spent his life defending, it probably becomes a lot easier for you to stomach doing the same for those who are killing innocent children. And if you find yourself agreeing with a man like Alan Dershowitz, who has defended Jeffrey Epstein, child predators, and the likes thereof, you might have some moral introspection you want to do with yourself. I'm just saying.